Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In our previous videos, we had talked on how various types of pumps work. We talked about centrifugal pumps and reciprocating pumps. But it's not over yet. Pumps are such a wide and evolving topic that a person can keep on talking and never stop. So, in today's video, we'll be talking about another type of pump called the rotary pump. Rotary pumps are positive displacement pumps that use rotary motion instead of reciprocating motion in their pumping action. The rotary pumps can be designed to pump liquids, gases, and even mixtures of the two. Unlike reciprocating pumps, the rotary pumps do not require an inlet or outlet check valve. Since the fluid flow is continuous, they develop a dynamic seal. All rotary pumps have three major operations, unlike the two of the reciprocating pumps. The first operation is the suction operation. Here the fluid is sucked into the pump from the pipe or reservoir. The next operation is the travel operation. Here the fluid moves from the suction side pump to the exit side. The third operation is the exhaust operation. Here the fluid exits the pump and flows into the exit pipe. If you feel all this a bit confusing, don't worry. As we progress in the video, you'll be able to get a better understanding. Ever since the development of better drivers for centrifugal pumps, they have been continuously replacing all types of pumps. But there is one huge disadvantage for these pumps. Similar to how kryptonite is dangerous for Superman, so is high viscosity fluids for centrifugal pumps. This is because it is very difficult to pump these fluids with just the centrifugal action. Due to this, a different type of pump called gear pumps are used. High viscosity fluids are the bread and butter of gear pumps. Gear pumps consist of two gears meshing each other. One gear is driven by an external shaft. This is called the driver gear. The other gear acts as an idle gear and rotates with the help of the meshing action from the driver gear. The gear pumps normally have extremely close tolerance between the gear teeth and the wall of the pump case. The close tolerance is the main reason behind the pumping action. As the gears of the pump rotate, they get separated at the suction side of the pump. This area is generally filled with fluid. Even if the suction area is not filled, the gear pumps are self-priming. This means they are capable of generating sufficient suction pressure to pull the fluid towards the gears for pumping. This is the end of the suction operation. As the gears rotate, the fluid is carried by the gears towards the discharge side of the pump. The tight meshing and almost zero clearance ensures that the fluid doesn't leak. This concludes the travel operation. As the gears now remesh together, the total volume will reduce. This forces the fluid out of the pump through the discharge pipe. This ends the discharge operation. There are many variations and types of gear pumps. The variations are made to accommodate the different types of fluid that they will be used to pump. The first type is the external gear pump. This is the type of gear we discussed until now. The next type of gear pump is called the internal gear pump. There are two different variants of internal gear pumps. One is the garrotor and the other is a crescent gear pump. The garrotor is a type of gear pump which has two gears arranged one within another. The working of the pump is similar to the external gear pumps. The fluid enters the garrotor through an inlet port. The fluid is then transported to the discharge port by the internal gear. Once the fluid is at the discharge side, the area between the two rotors decreases due to its shape. This forces the liquid out through the discharge port. The gear rotor pumps are most commonly used in automobiles to pump lubricant or oil. This is because these pumps are smaller than external gear pumps and are also able to pump viscous fluids efficiently. The next type of external gear pump is the crescent gear pump. Just like the previous two types of gear pumps, the crescent gear also has two gears which mesh together. The external gear is larger and has more teeth than the internal gear. However, it gets the name crescent due to the crescent or moon-shaped wall that is present inside the pump. When the teeth of the two gears come out of mesh, low pressure zones are created at the gaps between the teeth. Fluid is trapped between the teeth of the gears and the walls of the pump. As the fluid travels with the gear, it reaches a point where the gear starts to mesh again. This forces the fluid out of the pump and it exits through the discharge pipe. The crescent pumps are able to pump fluids with much higher viscosity than gyrotor pumps. These pumps are most commonly used in oil refineries to pump oil into the holding tanks. The pumps are also used in automatic transmission of cars to pump transmission fluid. Gear pumps are not without disadvantages. Increasing the RPM of the pumps higher than the prescribed value for a fluid can lead to cavitation. The pumps also have issues when pumping volatile liquids. This is because volatile liquids tend to vaporize locally as gear teeth spaces expand. 
To address this issue, a different kind of pump is used. Lobe pumps are similar to the external gear pumps in the way they work. Similar to how we have two gears which rotate and pump the fluid, lobe pumps have two lobes. The two lobes rotate in opposite directions to pump the fluid. When the two lobes of the pumps come out of the mesh, they increase the volume at the inlet side. This forces the fluid into the pump. As the lobes continue rotation, they carry the fuel towards the outlet side. Finally, when the lobes of the pump remesh again, the fluid is pumped into the exit port. Unlike the gear pumps, the lobes do not make contact with each other. Since there is no metal-to-metal -metal contact, the abrasive wear is very less. This increases the life of the pumps. The lobe pumps are most commonly used in the food industry to pump semi-solids like jams and ketchups. This is because they can handle semi-solids without degrading the product. The lobe pumps are used to pump low viscosity fluids with diminished performance. The loss in performance is mainly due to the fact that the lobes are not in contact with each other. Well, that's it for today's video guys. We'll meet again in the next one. Until then, bye!